Okay, welcome back. We're at the second part of session one of CEE 120B, 220B. Uh, at the break, the question came up about, oh, just Canvas, and what's that all about? So let me kind of take you there for just a second. Canvas is the system that's actually replacing coursework. It's just a course management system. And we have our class set up there. Oh, we have our files, uh, discussion groups that will get tied to the Piazza system. What else is in there? Oh, when we set up our little meetings, uh, and want to kind of set up one-on-ones as a way on the calendar, we kind of invite you to kind of reserve time. But what you'll find there today looks like this. Uh, we start out with, under the building model, information modeling workshop, just a couple folders. Session one just has the example of the old syllabus right now. You can download that if you want. But there is something called the integrated design project. And in that folder, what you'll find is the project description for the Sustainable Design Center, if you want to follow that, or just use it as a guideline for designing your own project. There's also some project site files, which for the Stanford Foothills are um, topography files of a site near Jasper Ridge as well as one near the dish. The third folder out there right now is something called the Audubon Center. We'll probably get to that towards the end of class today. It's um, an example of a building where we have the architectural files, the structural files, and the MEP files so we can start to see what that looks like in Revit in terms of bringing them all together. Okay, so the Canvas system is just really, yeah, ultimately it's gonna be used for all classes on campus. So go ahead and see if you can get yourself in there. I think you guys are all there as far as I know. Let's see what we got. Joe's there. Julia's working remotely. Gustavo's there. Brittany, there you are. Okay, excellent. So you should all be good in terms of getting on there. So let's just go on back to the outline and kind of talk about what we're going to do next. In terms of getting going, yeah, you know, I'd like to start by just illustrating some of the principles we're going to kind of be using as we think about like our own design projects. One being performance-based design, the other being this whole notion of design integration coordination. So for performance-based design. What I'm going to encourage us to do is actually just uh, start with designing a little bit of building. And let me zoom back out. That's my very good. Kind of think about really how conceptual feedback can actually help us do things like decide on the shape of the building, the orientation, maybe even the form of the building. And we can do this in a number of different ways. We can do some of this within the tool Revit. But we can also go through and do it in a tool called Formit 360, which I really like for doing this. So I'm going to take you down there. One thing you're actually going to get used to in the class is you're just going to see a lot of different tools. And just put them in your bag of tricks. Some you'll use a lot, some you won't use a lot. But uh, it's just sort of good to know about what's out there and understand what they're good for. Formit 360 is really designed to be kind of a web-based version of the conceptual design modeling environment Reddit that's pretty quick to work with. So if you were in 220A, we played around with it a little bit in terms of guesstimating the size of uh, the Y2E2 building. But let's just kind of show you what it looks like in terms of the energy side, because we didn't really do that very much. So what we're going to do is, oh, for our problem right now, let's just imagine that we had a program. We needed to build, oh, let's see. We decided on the location. We're going we're to put this in Thailand on an island called Koh Samui. Only because that is a very different climate than we have here. Although, you, have you been there? Koh Samui? No. no. Okay. Yeah. You're familiar with these cli <laughs> this climate, though. It's like very. Uh, it'll be. It'll be similar. Um, and what kind of building do we want to put out there, Alana? A house. <laughs> Wait. What do you mean? Oh, what could we do? We could do a house. That'd be kind of small. Oh, I want something where we can estimate something about the energy. We could do a school, we could do uh, some sort of nature center, we do all sorts of things. Yeah? Okay, how big should it be? Let's say, oh, let's say 20,000 square feet. Okay, that's a pretty big space. Okay, but it, it, when we start doing some of this stuff, it almost, if things get too small, it's really hard to get good estimates because just everything is so sensitive to very small moves, you don't really get the bigger message. So, okay, so we'll start with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out to Chrome. This works better in Chrome, which we're going to follow along. You don't have to do it, but if you want to plug along, please follow with me. 
I'm going to go to, uh, it's called format, uh, or autodeskformat.com, is that what it is? No. I'm going to try format.autodesk.com. Or more properly, format360autodesk.com. Basically, think of this as being, if Revit and SketchUp got together and lived on the web, this is what it would look like. <laughs> so, I will launch this tool. Again, it's going to work best if we do it in Chrome. It sort of likes that as a browsing environment. If it's not working for you on the machine that you're working on right now, don't panic. Just go over to another machine or something like that. It's just a little bit fussy in terms of different environments. So just format360.autodesk.com. Let's see if it launches for me. It's a trying. Tell me if yours comes up. If I'm just the only one and it doesn't like me. One of the uh, hidden gotchas of doing all this web-based software is sometimes it works well and sometimes it just doesn't. Okay, you're sort of in a similar spot, you're waiting? Yeah, so I would say that was really well understood. I like fueling the jetpack, always sounds good. Did you ask Norvala? Okay, we're all just kind of waiting. That's not very good, if it's not gonna work. Oh. I have to agree to these conditions. Boy, that sounds pretty uh, strenuous here. Close up this. Let me spread that out a little bit. Okay, I got a little environment here. It's washed out on my screen up here. It's basically just an X, Y, Z grid. We'll orbit that around a little bit so you can see better. So I see the grid lines move a little bit. How are you guys doing in terms of did it come up for you? Excellent. Marvelies. It's, it's still feeling your jetpacks. <laughs> it's still working up to you. I don't know, I should re refresh or No, I just let it hang. Okay. Based on, Ruth, what's it happening to you? Same. Same thing? Everyone's just waiting. Yeah. Everyone's still waiting. That's interesting. I definitely went first, so maybe the servers are having trouble responding. Let's see if it comes up for anyone else. Oh, it's going to try to get it. <laughs> Yes, it's something that was introduced last, well, maybe two years ago, but it really wasn't starting to use more prominently now. Again, a year's page unresponsive. It did that too, though, so. Is that, it did that too? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm going to say wait. Nothing? Just wait for it to come up with anyone else. I hate it when it does stuff like this. Okay. It's hanging there at 100%. Let's see if it comes up for anyone else. Let me start doing something and then we'll see if it's going to work for you guys too. Oh, we can't put it in demo land. But, oh, no, it's still there. Okay. Let me just hold it. Ah, it's going good. Funny. Did it, did it come up, Gustavo, or just so you hear about it? Or just working away? That is really strange in terms of their servers. Okay. Let me just start something. I keep saying that, so I keep hoping it'll come up with someone else too. Try refreshing. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. That's really annoying. Okay. And Brit's still up for you? Still. Okay. Let us see. 
If nothing else, watch. It's just going to be kind of a quickie demo, but it'll sort of demonstrate the point of uh, the responsive or the performance-based design, even if you can't follow along. So one of the things that's a consistent message through all this, like software is just software. <laughs> it's kind of, uh, it gets buggy at times. Okay, what we're going to do is, if we are going to good do good performance-based design, one of the most important things is always to figure out your location. Yeah, you know, everything's very location specific. We need to know latitude, longitude, weather, profile, look at the climate data, all that stuff's very important for us. And in this environment, how you do that is, we start by actually just setting a location. Actually, even in here, if you haven't done it yet, go ahead and log yourself in. I'm gonna be uh, going at Dentopia today. If you have your Autodesk student account, you should be able to log in. And it should give you access to like the full range of services, including energy analysis. That's why I want to try and like get to this. Okay, but we have our environment here. If I want to put a location in here, it's actually pretty straightforward. I could either click up here at the top. And it looks like a, one of those little Google map pins, or I could actually do it over here in the properties palette, either one. But if you choose that tool, what it's going to do is basically let you go ahead and put in some sort of a search location. And how do you spell Koh Samui? K-O-H? There it is, in Thailand. Well, here we are. Looks like we're up on the hills right now. I'm going to blame Alana for this one. OK. Where, where would you like to be on the island, Ms. Alana? Western winds or uh, eastern winds? East, east facing. Okay, I'll go back over here somewhere. There's some villas and a spa over here. This looks right by the Bill Resort. Okay, so basically the idea is you can go through and find some location. Okay, um, an unnamed road. <laughs> okay, if you try, you can actually go to the satellite view, which might be nice. I'm going to build it up here on the end of this road, wherever that is. Okay. If I would like to import the satellite image, what I do is choose import satellite image, and now I can go through and adjust this. I can sort of zoom in or zoom out. I can just sort of move this around to get the location I want. I'm going to get closer into the road. It's like I should be on something. Is that a road? That looks like a road. <laughs> kind of a dirt road, but it'll work. OK, so great. I'm going to choose that location. I am going to go ahead and say that I want to finish importing. It's like it's sticking to me. I usually hit escape when I'm having trouble. I'm not sure what's going on with the mouse, why it's being sticky right now. When I say finish importing, what it's going to do is take that satellite image and just put it down on the ground for me. I can roll back out and sort of see the satellite image. But the idea is for any context, you go ahead and choose a location and put it, that building out there. The reason we tend to like to choose buildings or locations is that, again, you like to see what the surrounding context is, but you also like the weather file. So let me go for another one. I'll do one that I know works that has a little more weather data to it. I'm going to switch over and do a new sketch. I'm going to go to a place, I did a project, hang on, in Singapore. Actually, that's probably the Koh Samui example. Let me go through, and again, I'll choose a location. I'm going to say it's called Labrador Park in Singapore. I know that location a little bit better. Okay, so if I go zooming on in here, OK, 
kind of this nice plot of land. Check that out. It's just waiting for me. Super. I've got a nice satellite image there. So great. I'm going to say import the satellite image. Oops. I should actually uh, do this properly. I'm going to roll back out. The truth is, see that little red pin? That's actually the location. Although there's really not that big a difference between you know, here and there, per se. But that pin is actually the location you sort of want to know about. Stop rolling in and out so badly. So if I drag the pin over to a location, that's what we want. Now what's kind of interesting about this is that it also includes weather data. So you can sort of see that there's these weather servers which actually collect weather data. We can decide whether we think this is more kind of a little bit inland, if it's like a very coastal weather, it's sort of out just like on a small island or something like that. But we can choose one of those weather profiles. And the nice thing is with these systems, we can sort of figure out a lot of information about the site. So for this weather station, we can see See what we can find out. The monthly temperature profile, we can figure out what the dry bulb temperature is, the min, the max, and the average. So we can sort of see oh, how it varies. Okay, we can also get some information about wind and stuff like that. Let's start with this for now. Okay, so I have that. I'm going to go back and choose my site. Again, I'm going to import my satellite image right about in here. Maybe zoom back out just a hair. I'm going to say finish importing, and that'll make my site. Now, the cool thing about having this as a site is now as we go through and we start to sort of think about what a building could look like on that site, um, we can get accurate sun shadows, accurate energy information, accurate all sorts of information. So let's think about how you do this. If you are familiar with SketchUp, which I think many of you are, or just even Revit in terms of the way it works as a tool, when we want to go through and create forms, typically what you do is you sort of sketch some sort of profile down on the ground and you sort of extrude, you push and pull them up and stuff like that. And this works very similarly. So if I want to, for example, sketch a profile, I could go to the sketching tools and either sketch free form in terms of doing individual line segments or get a rectangle or even get like an arc or a curve or something like that. But I'll do a 3D sketch with a pencil tool and say that, yeah, I'm thinking that my building is going to be sort of over here. As I pull on out, you can sort of see I have a dimension over there. If I tab, I can get that dimension into a precise footage. So for example, if I tab, I'll say that's going to be 300 feet in that direction. Then I'll pull over here. forward. Back over here. It's a little hard for me to see. There we go. Okay. With that as my basic shape, what I can do now is Go through and use the little uh, pointer tool. Select that. And then just push or pull it up. So the idea of this tool is as follows. You have a form there sitting there on the side. If you'd like to sort of know how big that is in terms of your budget, right now it's out very big. It's already 73,000 square feet. Okay. What I can do is say that I'm going to turn on levels for this. So I'm going to add a level. Level one's fine. I'm going to add a level at 15 feet. I'm going to add a level at 30 feet. Okay. And then for this guy over here, I'm going to turn on the levels. So that it's going to use all those different levels. Okay. And now you can see that 
for this form, and its current form is about 200,000 square feet. So it's actually quite a bit larger than what I want right now. So not to worry, that's okay. What I can do is start pushing and pulling on different edges of it. Bring it back in. See you later. building right now. If I want to just get the upper surface, so I'll click that, pull that down. About 54,000 square feet. Again, I can kind of keep on messing around with it, but I can try to get to close to what I want. This tool is really all about just being able to kind of quickly sketch out different shapes, and then based on those different shapes, well, we'll just get some preliminary feedback. So for example, at this level, If I'd like to understand just a little about the sun and the shadows and how they're going to fit on this building, I can just, even with what this little bit of building that I've done so far in place, I can start to think about that. For example, I can go through and turn on the sun shadows. And I can start to see what the sun's going to be like. Again, this will be accurate for Singapore. You know, it may or different times of the year, or I'll go to early in the morning to later in the afternoon. So we start to see, you know, we get a little self-shading at some point there. Yeah. We could also start doing a little bit of solar analysis on our building to figure out really what are the hot surfaces. For example, on this building, yeah, I suspect that this face, which it looks like it's heading towards the south. It's going to be a very hot face. It may just uh, really be a big energy consumption face that really creates a lot of troubles for us. And how we can sort of find that out is what's going on with my solar analysis? That should be enabled now. Don't move. Shadows. It's interesting about where that tool's gone. That should be there. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking. It's there, it's there. The problem with web based software is they keep on updating it, so I gotta think about really why those are all scenes and stuff like that. It should be there. I think we got the location. Let me just make sure we got it, because all the shadows are there. Hmm. Intriguing. It's very strange why that's not happening there. Okay. Let's try something else. Another thing we could try to do, even at this early stage, besides trying to see where the sun is and how the shadows are being that, is really try to understand a little about its energy use right now. So even on this very preliminary form located here in Singapore, if you wanted to start estimating its energy use intensity, let me show you how you can now start doing that. The energy use stuff is right next to location. It says energy analysis there. You might remember when we were doing this in Revit last quarter. That we had to kind of go through and carefully assign rooms and get everything sent off to go off to the building energy system. And there were, could be all sorts of difficulties in terms of trying to like, uh, like uh, get that information. It was sometimes a little bit finicky in terms of what's going on. I want to show you an interface that I think is actually really very cool for starting to understand your buildings, or at least very useful. What this is going to do is take that basic geometry we have break it down, process it, and send it to some energy servers, and give us some pretty quick feedback about the energy use of this building. Let's see what's going on, a little bit of processing. It's kind of funny, oh, analysis going on now. Not so funny. Seems like things are a little bit slow today. I'm not sure what that's all about. Actually, sure. Did it ever come up for either of you? It came up 
came up against all the poor Brit <laughs> without. What it's going to do is it's going to go through and do all the same sorts of calculations of you have all these surfaces, it'll make assumptions about the wind to the wall ratio and all the different surfaces. Sort of saying, hey, there's a temperature profile for outside, some assumptions about what the temperature should be inside, and then try to figure out just how much energy is going to be consumed to maintain that comfortable temperature range. And it's doing it all in the background. The reason I'm hoping I'm going to be able to show you this is that it presents itself in, I think, a really interesting way in terms of what the results are. So, let's see if it finishes. I'm just really bogged down with anything having to do with web today. Hmm. Well, now it's going to. I hope that's in our progress bar. If it is, we're going to be in trouble. But that's good. Oh. Let's see if it's going to go really that slow. If it is, I'm going to turn your attention to something else. Promising jump. <laughs> Let's see what this will do. We have some sort of results. Let's say we're going to view the results. What's it doing? Did it block a pop-up? Allow that. Try it again. Here's our basic little building. And so far you can see that just based on the data we put in there so far, here's our little building. We sort of see it kind of did the thing where, oh, it's indicating you know, what the window to walls are, what the different surfaces are. That's kind of OK. You can see that right now it's estimating that it's going to use $2.52 per square foot per year, which is actually not too awfully bad. This is a little bit higher than the ASHRAE standard. There's a range of values here. This is really what the values could be everywhere from the worst assumptions, kind of the uh, least conservative, most energy wasting assumptions, all the way to the absolute best performance. And the idea is really, how do we figure out how to get the better performance in the way that's most meaningful to us? And here's what it sort of looks like. There's this whole notion of really what the operating schedule of the building is. Right now it's currently set to 12.5, or anywhere from 24 7 to 12.5. If we want to sort of see what the impact of really tuning that up would be, what we can do is go everywhere from 24 7, which would have an energy use of oh, around 1.25, all the way down to 12.5, so five days a week only 12 hours, okay, which actually lower it significantly. And when we do that, You'll see it starts dropping things. You can say, what would really be the inefficiency of uh, going ahead and changing the roof construction? Right now, it's an uninsulated R60 roof. Okay. Looks like in that one, playing with the roof really doesn't have much of an impact. From the highest to the lowest, really isn't going to give us much of a change. Because that R60 is already pretty good in terms of what's going on. Let's take a look at the window glazing. 
Right now it's single clear triple E. Okay, again, if it's single clear triple E, we're not really changing it all that much. Even going to triple is not really changing it very much. In fact, look, we're close to zero here in terms of you know, the actual dollars, so that's not really where the money's going. So the key is really to start thinking about all these different things, really what it is it that's making the biggest difference. There are 13 walls, again, that doesn't seem to make much of a difference about whether they are anywhere from R13 to R38. Increasing the insulation in the walls isn't really happening very much. Let's talk about the window to wall ratio. Oh, for the southern walls, right now, this might start having a little bit of a difference. Anywhere from 95%, which is almost you know, fully glazed, to reducing it to only 30%, starts to have some little impact. But the idea is really to try and figure out what are the things that are going to have the, the biggest you know, payback for you. For the HVAC system, let's take a look at that. Ah, no. This was looking pretty interesting in terms of what's going on. In terms of the HVAC system, anywhere from a heat pump all the way down to a package terminal or a high efficiency VAV, okay, would again lower us on down. So what's the point of all this? It's really not that you're going to necessarily get an incredibly accurate figure. Yeah, because we spent a few minutes modeling the building, and it's really not a very accurate model of the building. But hopefully this is giving us some insight about really what it is we can change and what makes the biggest difference. Okay, and you can start to see how we're driving things down over time. And that's again just sort of preliminary feedback. So the point is, even at conceptual design stage, a little bit of performance-based feedback can go a long way in terms of uh, just helping you decide really where to focus your energy. I like this in particular. The reason I wanted to show this to you is, you know, in 220A, as we would go through and we'd try to change different things, and then you'd send it off to Green Building Studio, it was almost too much work sort of guesstimate what the results would be and see whether it made a difference or didn't make a difference. It was almost like just shooting in the dark a little bit to see really what was going to have the biggest impact, although those nice charts which showed where the heat and the cooling was coming, whether it was through the windows, the walls, gave us some pretty good guidance. But this sort of, of a dashboard interface, it's really done a lot of that work for us. So it's just all about giving us some feedback. You know, it's interesting to sort of think, could we make a bigger change just by sort of doing something like changing the lighting efficiency, going to LED bulbs? Like that's huge, as opposed to putting a lot of extra money into windows or insulation. So interesting stuff. Okay, the last thing I want to finish up with today though is this whole notion of building integration and how we pull these models together. And the idea is, we have models, lots of different sort of models that work uh, and describe individual systems that may be created by individual people, but it'd be nice to sort of pull them together. So let me kind of show you a little bit how that works. We'll invite you all to a system called BIM 360, which will sort of make this very available to us, but I'm going to show you an example of a series of different models. I'm pretty bad about spelling Audubon, so I'll apologize if that's incorrect and I'm going to open up a model. Okay. These models are actually out there on the Canvas system, so if you want to follow along, you can. But again, just because we're close to the end of class, you might be better just to watch along for now. That's really annoying. Okay, Windows 10, do your thing. I want to make you bigger. Here's the deal. This is a little building, it's called the Audubon Center. It's actually a real building, and it's an example of something like the Sustainable Design Center. This is a building all around the, uh, for the Audubon Society. They help people appreciate nature. I think this is nothing. Becky's. You gotta think about where the precise site is. It's like in Maryland or Virginia or something like that. It's actually a nice site. Okay, but in this building, you'll see there's not only the architectural model, Okay, which is kind of an interesting building unto its own right. Okay. But we also have the models for the mechanical and the uh, which, uh, structural systems. So in addition to this model, which was probably created by a team of architects, okay, we also have a model of the structural system. Just gotta bring that up. Okay, 
which looks something like this. So you can imagine that working in parallel with the architects, a team of structural engineers has come up with this model. We've got the gray beams, the piers. We have a little bit of steel frame structure, some light gauge steel joints at the top. But some people did a whole structural system to kind of match that building, and they work together in that what happened is as these different buildings are working together, what someone has done is just linked together the different models. So we can link, for example, I'll have to do this by closing the architectural model, hang on. And I'll close the other one. If I'm linking together models, the deal is, I, we learned this back in the structural, in the class for this year's structural model, you can't keep them open from two sides. So if you're gonna link it, you can't have it open for editing at the same time. Okay, so if I'm going to link to the architectural model, what I do is just kind of have the structural model open, I'll say link the architectural. And we can sort of see how the two different things work side by side with each other. You know, in parallel universes, maybe that's a better way to say it. It's a coming. Which I think it's there now. Let me just see if I have my links man there. And manage my links. It is there. I think then what I need to do in this view is turn on coordination or something like that. start to see the architectural elements pop in. Okay, there's also a model of the mechanical system that again, another team of engineers worked with. Okay, and you see this is actually sort of incredibly complex. In that when you really dig into this model, there is information about every pipe, every piece of ductwork, every switch, it's all the lighting fixtures, it's all out there. And this is all, again, modeled independently. And that's all okay to have them all independent, but you might ask, uh, how do they all get together? And that's where really this BIM 360 glue tool that a lot of you got exposed to in 220A comes in, and it works very well. So the idea is, kind of like what people were doing back in 220A, once you've signed yourself in, Once we've signed ourselves in, there is an add-in which is available called glue. And when we glue a project, what we're doing is really just taking the elements here and putting them out into a web interface that allows us to get to them in a merged, integrated way. And that lets us experience the entire building. And let me do this. I'll just go to that merged model. We'll do this together next time. And you guys get a chance. But we'll go to the glue environment and just sort of see what it's like to experience it there. Because that's the other thing we're going to keep on doing is we keep on working through your different buildings. We'll always be gluing things, posting them up there, so that any time, you know, not only do we sort of understand them through the individual disciplines, but you can sort of see what the total holistic system is in an integrated way, and an immersive way, too. OK, so I'll sign in over here. I think many of you probably still have access to this from last time, but we'll see. Let me go to BSI Glue. So we have your projects from last time. You can take a look at some of those. Did anyone glue anything interesting? I'm trying to think. A lot of people didn't have to do that. Let's go to the sample project. The sample project is the one that has the Audubon Center. So if I go to, oh, the merge model, the Juliana merge one, let's open it. The idea is 
we can experience this in a web environment, or we could also experience it in an iPad environment or in a mobile environment. And this is all about you know, the whole notion of really pulling information, getting it out of our computers and out in the field where people can actually use it where they need it you know, in real time. Let's see if this thing will finish loading. The internet's just painfully slow today. I don't know what's going on. So in this model, this integrated model, you can see that the structural elements are there along with the architectural elements. Okay? And if we want to see things a little bit independently, we can go through and say, you know, hey, I would really rather just turn off the architectural and only see the structural. Zoom on in there. Kind of see the mechanical and the structural working together. Or I can turn back on the architectural and just turn off some specific things, whether it's the walls or the curtain walls or whatever it is that you sort of want to see. But the idea behind the immersiveness of this environment is that we can, let me go on in here. walk right into the building they pan down a little bit I'm a little high on the ceiling just walk into the building have a look around look up over, if there's something that I want to see that I can't see because it's obscured right now, go through and again, just turn off uh, some layer that's obscuring things that I can't see, turn the back on. But I can really experience the building in a different way and there's something very nice about being able to experience the building by walking through it as opposed to just sort of always looking at it at the outside. You know. So as we work on your buildings and your designs, the idea that, you know, hey, as you're designing your mechanical system, we could actually, as you're walking through and taking a look at it, is how, you know, how it's really going to appear, not just in the abstract sense, but uh, kind of really how it's all going to work together, is very, very useful. It's also very useful from the standpoint of really just discovering different things because, oh, as we're working independently, one of the biggest challenges we tend to have is that everyone working independently um, often end up working in the same space, not being aware of the fact that they're conflicting with each other. So this tool's really, really good at helping you not only see that stuff, but if you want to, just even going through and running a clash detection. So I'll just say, let's find everything where the mechanical conflicts with the structural right now. Find the clashes. Software is incredibly good at doing things like this. So, ah, there's a big old clash somewhere. Let's take a look at where that is. It'll take us to it. So we can start to see, hmm, there's something going on there where some pipes intersecting with a floor, something like that. So again, pipes intersecting with floors. That's not too awfully bad in the scheme of things. Just that. I'm more interested in where pipes are intersecting with beams. I should have been a little bit more careful about that. Let me do another one where it's not just the entire structural system. It's just going to be, let's say, the structural framing. That'll be a little better. It always comes down to what you ask for. Now that's a little more interesting as a clash. Let's see what that one is. That looks like some piece of pipe which is going right through the middle of some duct. <laughs> okay, so again, it'll be a clash that has to be fixed.
Okay, so just little kind of hints about where we're going with the whole process. The big things to take away are, we're going to kind of come from an overall design. We are going to design every individual system against some performance-based criteria, trying to uh, see if we can sort of make our system meet the criteria we'd like to be. And we're going to ultimately coordinate all the different systems to make sure that they all fit together, they don't conflict, and you have a big holistic building that works together as a whole. Cool. That's where we're getting started. Between now and then, if you can, just think ahead to like, you know, what you might want to do as a project. Okay, and we'll talk about it on Thursday. Just like, just, you know, come up with a couple like random ideas. Don't be well developed yet. Just throw it out there on like a Thursday and we'll talk about it together. And I think it'll be interesting to see what different people are thinking about. But as we go through, maybe if one of you have an idea, we can kind of scope it out together. Okay, and that'll be an example of other people about what I'm looking for in terms of the appropriate scope and how to think about, you know, kind of bounding the problem so it doesn't get to be too big. Okay? Excellent. Okay, thank you. We will adjourn for the day.